Hello everyone, I am DeSoto Brown. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architect. And I am joined today by this program host, Martin, who's speaking to us from Germany. And let's put Martin on the screen and say hello to him. Hello, Martin, there you are. Hello, my friend, how's it going? Uh, it's going very well, and Martin is speaking to us in the early morning in Germany and in the afternoon. So he had to get up early to do this. And we thank you for doing that, Martin. My and pleasure. Let's get started. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. And we promised in the last show, which was about the Princess Kaiolani Hotel, to shed a light on a couple of other hotels who might need some help, right? Correct. So uh, let's bring up the first picture here. This is the reference that um, there's a hotel, which used to be the Waikiki Park Hotel, and that's the project we're going to talk about. Let's go right. quickly to uh, slide two already here. And that gives us the context of uh, the architect um, of this project, which uh, was Edward Killingsworth. And he is mostly known for the Kahala Hilton Hotel that you see our tropical tourist expert Suzanne standing in at the very top left and on the right you see Killingsworth with his uh, client Conrad Hilton and so um, this was we're talking 1960s uh, very classy times and as classy as our previous uh, guests uh, Mayumi and John Hara and John's car was the Pagoda Mercedes from that era so uh, one thing was very typical, sort of a signature style um, by Edward Killingsworth, which our friend and previous host in a lot of shows you have been doing with him and will be doing with him with Don Hibbert and in his uh, legendary book, uh, Designing yes. Paradise. Yes. He refers to some elements in his architecture as the concrete trellises. And so these you can just see at the very bottom left. So let's go to this project here, which is the next slide, number three. And here you can see these bones or concrete trellises sticking out of the project. Let's put it into a context of uh, something else. Next uh, slide, please, which we like to compare architecture and vehicles and use automobiles as vehicles for thought. So the next generation after John's car was this model here of the Mercedes-Benz SL, as it shows here, and I pulled this from the Mercedes-Benz classic website. So they made this one from 71 till 89, and with that, it's one of the longest made models of modern car history, where they didn't basically change the uh, model, uh, the body style, just the, the very sort of subtle uh, revisions. So what does it have to do with the architecture? Next slide. Uh, this time era from the mid 70s to the mid 80s was also the uh, time of uh, the longest uh, period of a governor running in the state of Hawaii, and that was Mr. Ariyoshi, yes. who you can see here at the very bottom right. And um, what's the relationship to, we've seen that, that blue car a couple of times before because it happens to be mine and I snapped that, I call it a donation from some locals who gave it to me for rather little money and they told me it was originally Ariyoshi's wife's car. And so here we are and uh, we're in this time period. We threw in another picture here I snapped from another classic which is the Varsity Building and we see another model of these uh, you know, classic, modern classics or young timers, I guess we could say. And we're talking about the same year of build of my car, which is 87. And that's also the year when the Waikiki Park Hotel was built back then. And let's go to the next picture. This is how it looked until most recently, uh, which, you know, looks fine to me. But as we learned from tropical tourism expert Suzanne, Every so, like seven to 10 years, the tourist industry thinks they need to remodel hotels to keep them up to date and fresh and, and basically rentable to, to hotel guests. And so let's look at the, the project next page here, how it looked like until most recently. I took these pictures here shortly before I left at the end of the semester, heading out to my sabbatical here in Germany. And this is how it looked right now. It's much progressed. 
But let's look at the next slide, which is uh, from the website of the Holly Kalani, who is the sister hotel and has always been. And uh, this is their imagination or their promise, what they try to make out of it. Maybe you want to comment a little bit about what you see. This well, well, two things here. Well, one thing we discussed when we were discussing this earlier was that uh, the Waikiki Park Hotel, first of all, it's being rebranded as the Holly Puna. And the Holly Puna is a new Hawaiian name. But you'll notice also that the logo type that they're using is identical to the one that the Holly Kulani Hotel currently uses, which it invented or first put into use in the early 1960s. So they're very clearly putting these two hotel, hotels together as a unit and showing there's a connection. But the photograph mm -hmm. looking out over the blue ocean is perhaps misleading because the Waikiki Park or Holly Puna is not located right on the beach. So you're never going to be having this unimpeded view of the ocean that you see in this photograph. So buyer beware. Yeah, and nor will you have the one at the very bottom right, the sort of ancient, no. unobstructed view of Diamond Head and no. that one palm tree. That's long gone, right? Yes, very that's, long gone. That's maybe okay. That's maybe okay. Next picture, because we're talking about Waikiki, a very dense urban fabric with one of the highest high-rise densities in the United States. I think we're scoring position number six or so of the number of high-rises yeah. in the United States. So this is one here, and this is what, what is going on. Their renovation isn't just interior, but it's also exterior. Here you can see the original enclosure, the glass facade at the top, and then at the bottom, them ripping them out. Um, uh, so you can see that clearly here. And so um, what, what is, let's look at the original one. You have lanai's sticking out and you of course have an access to the lanai, which is a sliding door, which is a sliding glass panel. But next to that, you also have a piece of glass and the guardrail continues. And that gives you an indication there might be some functional reason for that. And there is because the, the glass part behind that also has a sliding part. While this is a double loaded corridor, so you don't get the cross ventilation, but you might get some side ventilation, if you want to call that. So um, let's see what's going on and go to the next picture here. You can see at the very bottom right, they're putting in or they put in what you call a mock-up. So before they install the entire windows, they test it. They put a sample in there, a mock-up. And let's look at that closer in the next picture where you can see the construction worker cleaning out the original at the top and at the bottom. And for me, shockingly, you see something here that uh, that what used to be a, a two-part system with a sliding door is now one fixed piece, which is uh, shocking and unfortunate because we used to say easy breezy and we, we get to the, you always credit me as the author of that, but in fact, there's another person that we refer to later in the show who owns that uh, copyright for that <laughs> saying originally and not just quoting her. So here we're turning from easy breezy to hermeticizing and that's something we don't like. No. Sort of, right? But what we like is to say, what if, so let's go to the next picture and just imagine, you know, you rip it all out and let's uh, dream about the potential and that's the next slide here. This is uh, Tropic here, David Rockwood, uh, with the emerging generation testing alternative ways of mitigation of uh, wind and sun and privacy. And do each creating one of these those, fascinating Martin, I wanted to ask here. you does each one of those horizontal louvers move independently? Is that the intention of no, this? No, they move to, they, well, they, they can move independently, as you see at the very bottom right, you can right. turn them individually, but more importantly and fascinatingly, you can you can basically uh, uh, basically move them all down. Right. Uh, so you have you have a balustrade that keeps you from falling off the building, but you have a totally uh, unobstructed clear view and then you can move them up. So it's you know it's very multifunctional and yeah. would be great. And you can only do this in Hawaii. Never right. I'm in here, I'm in freaking cold Germany. And that is, that's Hawaii. a very innovative way of dealing with louvers. I mean, we've had, you know, Don Hibbert and I did a show just about jealousy windows. We don't have that exactly. with fixed glass jealousies. Mm -hmm. Then this no, is really exactly. quite striking. Yeah. Let's turn the discussion to a slightly different but somehow connected uh, level here and go to the next slide. 
Uh, this is looking at the sister hotel, the big sister, the Halekulani here. And there's a big piece of artwork that you can see in the background. And while I, this is from the 80s and sort of looks like that is a little too literal for me. But what I like is uh, the plaque at the bottom right explain the artwork and it basically points something out that you know usually you want to the tourist industry is not dwelling on so much because they want to you know uh, paint this picture of peaceful tropical paradise hula dancing you know Love, girls and aloha. stuff like that exactly but they don't talk about what the sculpture the intention of the background of the sculpture is that the hawaiian islands people have been fighting a lot and and, yeah. and making war against each other and and this is addressing that and you were the one when uh i was actually happened to be on the road and actually servicing my car at jiffy lube when we were in touch and he said martin have you watched the news what's going on in france there's revolution there's riots going on and i want to make very clear if you see at the bottom left i'm not a fox news watcher for <laughs> obvious reason but Jiffy Lupus, so never mind. But you can see what's going on. I mean, this was going, and they were fighting over fuel tax, as it says here. And it's it's gone crazy. So let's go to the next slide, because what, what does that have to do with, with us on the island? When this is, the project is on my daily, or was on my daily jogging route. And so I experienced um, something going on, which was people on strike. And these were the... Uh, the hotel service workers basically fighting for uh, getting more money. And fighting uh, reminded you of something surreal, and you might not think it's, it's somehow directly related, but if you think about it, it is. And let's go to the next slide and please explain what was striking you. Well, the, the, the photographs that we see here are taken uh, in Beirut, Lebanon. And in 1975, there was, that was a site of a civil war that erupted in the country. And ironically enough, in the midst of this city of urban high rises, and particularly in an area where all the hotels were, one of the major hotels at the time, which was the American chain Holiday Inn, became a central part of this civil war because it was so it's such an important position and it was so tall. Anybody who was in the Holiday Inn, which of course at that point had been devastated by gunfire and, and fire, etc., mm -hmm. could control the area around it by shooting at people in the streets. So we saw this very bizarre juxtaposition of a Holiday Inn hotel becoming a symbol of war. Mm -hmm. And next picture, because you might, people might think they're crazy now. What in the world does this have to do with us in Hawaii, our peaceful paradise? And let's go to the next picture. History has shown if you don't take care of the little people at the lower end of the food chain, at some point they will not put up with that anymore. And Correct. they will step up and they will fight for their rights. And that's the situation. That's the biggest challenge we have on the islands. And it's different yes. to mid-century, which we glorify so much. We have these different circumstances where the cost of living is exponentially getting more and more extreme and wages are not rising proportionally to that. So uh, when I was jogging by, I saw the surreal situation of you know people spending their annual vacation and a lot of money in, in the adjacent hotels, and all they were expecting uh, and counting on was peaceful tropical breezes, maybe some birds, but what they were hearing was, uh, was, was aggressive noise coming from one, the construction site, and you yes. know, jackhammering and stuff like that and secondly there were these these people on strike and hammering on you know gas cans and, and and kitchen pots and stuff like that so there was this sort of really rebellious riot uh, situation going on and you know other things have been discriminated i mean waikiki was was basically landscape and, and and flora and fauna and maybe this rooster in the front is a is a is a leader here as well and and me too you know here is here is me and my my car that that i that i picked up right uh you know one job is not enough as it says well one job should be enough see how it it should be enough exactly yeah. and and it is not so um again going back to architecture what does it have to do with architecture and so right. let's go to the next picture here. Here's a potential. 
because the, the project is being comprised of a tower and a plinth, as, as most uh, hotels uh, are in Waikiki and, and all across the, the Hawaiian Islands. And so the next picture here shows a potential that we've been pointing out some shows ago, which we gave it the surreal title, or even more surreal title, the People Power Parking Plinths. And that means if we somehow manage to get the island back to something different than individual, inefficient, and ineffective uh, traveling in uh, little tin cans that are driven yeah. by fossil fuel, yes. then maybe we open up the space that until now hosts these tin cans and we can open this up for people as this picture here shows. These are of course hotel workers and not the people in need who would need the space, but there is this potential. So let's go to the next slide. And this is uh, taken the picture of the hotel from the other side, from the Mauka side. And you can see relating to Rockwood screens here, some screens were already in place. So it's almost ready to move in for, as we call them, the proletarian people. And that gave the name to the show, the proletarian people power, powers potentially. Sounds weird, right? But maybe DeSoto and Martin were ahead of that time because I threw in this little article from a German online newsletter here at the very top right. And it says, there's my daily German lesson, im Parkhaus sind noch zimmerfrei. And you do, you're, you bravely do your German lessons. So what does that mean, DeSoto? Please translate. <laughs> I can't remember now. You told me and I don't remember. I apologize. <laughs> so it means no problem, you're a patient student. So this means in the parking garage, there are rooms available. And you were surprised right. because this is a German article, right? Right, right. And one of the things that we, you and I have talked about is when you're talking about people moving into spaces like this, it really requires a tropical climate in which you don't need to shut out the cold. And yet, this is the thing that surprised me, they're talking about doing this in Germany where it is cold and you do need protection, exactly. unlike easy breezy living in Hawaii. Exactly. And that means if you can do this in Germany and in we temperate climates, here. you sure should be able to do that in Hawaii. Exactly. Okay, let's go to the next picture. Again, us dreamers and, and visionary uh, uh, people here, uh, folks, uh, how do we do that if we bring back the island to mass transportation, which again, we used to have streetcars and cable cars, electric cars, as we can see here. Uh, let's go to the next picture and, and, and zoom into the, the micro pores of the architecture that we're analyzing here. And uh, this picture at the top in the middle made you laugh, gave you a chuckle, right? It certainly did. Because I thought I was the only one who had long hair in the distant past, but that long-haired <laughs> young man standing next to the Mercedes station wagon is Martin back when he had hair with his father and their Mercedes station wagon, which we did not ever have in the United States in those days. So Martin exactly. had good. The first, the first TE model, uh, was built from the mid 70s again. There we go again, back to the beginning of the show to the mid 80s. And so, as my car, and at the very top left, you see me taking a picture of some uh, things uh, that were meant to be clipped on sort of the, the hinge here, where mm -hmm. of the seats, which are out of metal, but these caps are basically out of plastic and chromed. And so, they're, they're falling off because they're getting old and. and you know, plastic is not aging well. And what does it have to do with the architecture? Because at the bottom or at the, at the top right, you can see this is a, a, um, a detail from the Kahala Hilton, where it's all concrete and they went through the effort to put this additional batten at the corner and take it off with the foam work and it leaves this sort of negative Miesian corner. Uh, again, that was mid sixties. And so here now when they, at, very bottom of this uh, page here, you can see that the construction workers took off an awning that used to be attached to the to the trellis structure. And so here, all of a sudden, you can see what's coming through, which is a steel structure, and it's been boarded up and, and plastered. And then somehow it reminded you of the way we built these days, right? And you were it, referring to our show of you uh, of your Denny's in your front yard. Exactly, show exactly. Off. Yeah, one of the things that it made me think of was when you look at pictures of buildings after natural disasters, after earthquakes or sometimes hurricanes or tornadoes, you see when the facades are damaged or ripped off, 
what the inners, inner parts of these buildings really are. And many times it's deceptive. Many times there is a false front that looks like something, but it really wasn't made of that. And, and when you were taking yeah. pictures of the construction of the Denny's restaurant right next to Kapilani Park and the zoo, mm -hmm. that's what we were seeing. We were seeing uh, structural steel and things like that with decorative things put on the front to make it look like a different building, yeah. covering up what it really was. And, and as we're not afraid to be political, we talk about zeitgeist and we say everything, you know, prior to the uh, 70s, that breaking point was authenticity of the Carter era and everything after that to be continued now, unfortunately, is sort of the fake front Reagan era, yep. right? That's right. So if we go to the next picture on the other side, the Hale Kalani, uh, however, the Hale Kalani was built a little earlier, three years earlier in, in 84. They still were holding true to the Kahala Hilton tradition, even here more refined. Not only did they break uh, the, the corner in a 45 degree angle, but also in the, in the center of each side, they put in some significant, even more significant uh, effort to uh, decorate, as we could say, the, uh, the columns, right? Yeah. So let's look at the next page uh, about what they're going to do. This is a uh, hard to pronounce name of an interior design firm. Sounds rather French to me. And, and the design is sort of cream colored and beige and, you know, sort of tries to be in that sort of elegant, humble tradition of the Halakulani. And there's, there's nothing bad about it. But as we were saying before, does this address the significant issues and challenges we're having socially on the island? And I think we said, it, it doesn't. So where could be some hope? And let's go to the next picture. Uh, there is a little gallery in the Halakulani just between the two restaurants. And uh, I do a pit stop occasionally there and, and look at the artwork. And there were this four piece uh, artwork in the back that was uh, uh, mesmerizing me because it's in the true tradition of modernism being very abstract, being patterned. But the closer you get, just like in modernism, you see something maybe more real maybe more literal and these are comprised of thousands of little fish and it's an artwork by shouldn't have surprised me our dear friend kaili chun uh, the show we did with her is referenced here at the top right and kaili is indeed the one who crafted the term easy breezy <laughs> so let's go to the next slide and let's be a little bit uh, patriotic here about because uh, kaili has a little german in her as well and, and let's just say, what if? Let's just say, what if Halikolani would have gotten the whole job to Kaili, to a local girl who is Princeton educated by Michael Grays and has ever since proven to be the most talented, uh, sensitive of a culture, but as well also critical in a constructive, critical way um, in questioning our culture. And we're uh, getting fascinating, you and Don, with your screen show. I did a little addition to that a while ago in our show where we were saying there is a German product that uh, offers uh, glass jealousies that have been optimized to the uh, temperate climate here. So they made a triple glaze. They thermally optimized the frame. So you can withstand the cold winters and the hot summers here with that system. And right. so we were saying, well, I, I can see when Kaili would have been doing this, she would have equipped the whole facade maybe with that system. So you can do what they call a split system that when the sort of little bit of a sissy tourist coming in August, it's just too hot for them. They can shut them close and run their AC, but only to open it up in the fall and in the spring when we have perfect you know, uh, uh, temperatures and we don't. And you know, you, you can nowadays technologically have the AC shut off automatically when the windows are open. It's a very simple thing to do. Mm -hmm. You're saving yeah. energy when yeah, you're yeah, doing yeah. that. And we could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. The next picture that gets us to the bigger scale, to the macro scale, a study we've been doing a while ago with the emerging generation um, here, uh, sort of critic, uh, criticized and critiqued by uh, our activist journalist Kurt Sandburn that you see in that picture and his text that, uh, you know, if we would do that, what we're just talking about, these sort of innovative retrofitting, probably coming full circle back to the roots, to the right. beginning of Waikiki, where everything was easy breezy That's and right. not on the fossil um, hook yet, mm -hmm. uh, what would happen then? And it could look like that. And let's go to the next picture. 
zooming in and we have tropical tourism expert Suzanne again saying, well, this is where tourism is going anyways. There is the catchy term. We don't like the term sustainability, but it's been used in the tourist industry where the, uh, where the tourists are not tourists anymore. They're short-term occupants, they're guests, and they become involved and they get interested in and they care. And they're not depleting, uh, you know, a place, but they're they're engaging with it in, right. in, a, in a in a constructive way. And as we said, um, when um, you know, there could be the synergy of in this building, the uh, former Park Hotel, where the proletarian workforce people who take care of the guests, you know, live in its plinth, and uh, and the guests live upstairs, and they can mix and mingle. You know, why isn't this possible? Why do the workforce people have to live far out west right. where the only place is where they can afford something and then they're stuck on H1 or they have to leave at 3 a.m. in the morning? Yeah. You no, know, let's integrate that, make that inclusive, right? Correct. That's right. And, so and we were talking, you and I were discussing too, that as Honolulu is affected by the mass transit system, we will see more and more of this living close to your job thing, or at least that's what I hope and you hope as well. Yeah, and that gets us to the next page, which is showing the attempt of the major landowners. We're seeing Howard Hughes at the top with a little ironic, we find, you know, they have their uh, their development model up there and they have it in front of the architect of your place, Vladimir Osipov's IBM building, where he some half of a century or more ago was recognizing a glass box doesn't do it. You need to shade that. So he did this very, very, um, imaginative trellis shading work around it, and but today you know we don't learn from that. You see at the bottom these are the the affordable so-called affordable projects by at the bottom right Kamehameha School, but all you see is basically a chevron decorated elevator shaft. Or in the middle you see that just almost completed uh, workforce project by Howard Hughes where they're using. You know these sort of punched in um, mm -hmm. shared gathering spaces, but that's a theme. It reminds us of you know us old fogies of Miami Vice and its original from the from the from the nineties, and uh, and Architectonica having built this sort of Atlantis project. This this isn't really new, right? I mean, no. we're basically recooking, warming up old things, and yes. our island deserves what Osipov has been doing. Correct. Something that's really sort of novel and, and new and fresh and, and, and specific to our place, right? Exactly. And gets us to the next picture here, second to last, um, is showing what, DeSoto? Well, we're seeing the, uh, when you revealed your class reveal from one of their projects, and at the project were both me and uh, former Governor Neil Abercrombie. And Governor Abercrombie is holding up a booklet, which is called Wither Honolulu from 1938. And it was a publication by a city planner named Lewis Mumford, and he was advocating for some of the things that we're talking about right now for Honolulu. He was saying, you need to recognize your location, you need to take advantage of your weather, you need to work within these things to make your city more beautiful, and it's still applicable today. Exactly. And another thing he was proposing, and that was one of the reasons I think he is not our governor anymore, because he was too brave and ahead of his time. He was proposing to not stick to this sort of 400 feet, yes. uh, you know, chopping off um, uh, skyline. But he's saying, let's, you know, allow certain prominent and dominant buildings and maybe proletarian people, power towers could be such to rise higher. And, yes. and so um, certain things need longer. And he was, you know, breaking the ground for that. And broke his neck, but now we're back to that. You sent me the article at the middle row at the top yeah. that lawmakers are basically rethinking that thing. And while we, you know, we're weirdos and we're proposing this stuff, but uh, we need we need politicians like Neil with visions. So hopefully we get that lady at the very bottom as the next president, or if not, maybe we get, as we were promoting, uh, the Rock Dwayne Johnson as to yeah. renew his candidacy, which he was suggesting. And then yes. maybe they can support projects like, as you see on the right, and I think this is actually the Foster Tower that we're retrofitting and saying strip yeah. it and take it, take off the facade. And then you see that green thing, which is just symbolic for, again, screens could be vegetative yeah. as well, which gets us to the last page, which is our concluding note here, because 
many people, you know, know we're far out there and we're dreaming and people could say, well, keep on dreaming, guys, but it's probably not going to happen. And so we learned that if we can point out some potential on the island, that things have been done that we just need to do again, that yes. might be more convincing. So this one here comes full circle to Edward Killingsworth. And uh, one of his last projects on the island built in 1994 is on the what we now know as the Koalina Resort. And the first project that was built there was the Ihilani. Right. And it shows the same architectural language with the trellises and the formwork, concrete formwork. But guess what, uh, which we also saw at the very beginning, and people were probably curious in the permanent background picture, you can see what we were talking about, what we constantly talk about. Keep the facade open, don't glaze it, use vegetation, use plants, use curtains. And yeah. here we are and have always been doing that. So let's do it again. How about Very that? good. Well, thank you very much, Martin, for joining us. And thank you all of you who've watched us today. We will be back for Think Tech Hawaii in two weeks. Um, I will be back, I mm -hmm. assume, next week for Dokomomo Hawaii. And so until yeah. we all see each other again, thanks everybody for watching and see you next time. And, and we're going to stick with hotels, right? And I think we said, let's take on, you know, in the last show, we showed this project and also the Outrigger. So let's do an Outrigger hotel. We're going to be, okay. and I just sent you some really good Outrigger stuff. So watch for those. You did. In the, your email. The, the picture I was waiting for for so long. I woke yeah. up with that. It made me very happy. Thank you very for good. that. Thank you, everybody. See you next Aloha. time. Aloha. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.